Election day is growing closer and closer. Why should you vote for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? We have college Republicans and college Democrats in the studio for a live debate. And the Vols fall to Alabama, bringing their record to 5-2. and two. We have an update on game day events as well as highlights from the game itself. Plus, mass shootings have affected the world in many ways from Paris to Orlando. How one event is educating students on the tragic events with real-life survivors. All that and more coming up. Welcome to another episode of TBC News. I'm Ansley Daniel. And I'm Jake Albright. Even though Tennessee didn't pull out a win this weekend against Alabama, Vol fans and Alabama fans alike turned out to celebrate the matchup. TBC reporter Max Davenport has more. Thanks, Jake. This past weekend, I was able to catch up with the most dedicated fans in the land, the Vols at the Thank You Tailgate as we prepare to take off against Alabama on Saturday. The Vols are ready for a close matchup and hopefully a win as they painted the lawn orange and white. I'm looking for Tennessee to beat Alabama. To no surprise, many Alabama fans joined the Vols in having a good time while cheering on their favorite teams. The volunteer spirit attracts fans and foes both near and far. Sheila Hunter is the wife of a lifelong Vol fan. However, she herself happens to be an Alabama fan. Sheila says that not only does her husband support her, but it keeps their relationship afloat with a competitive edge. It doesn't really intimidate me. I really appreciate that they strongly represent the team. I feel the same way about mine. It's a key rival and always will be. For Scott Lowry, a member of the university's event staff, he says the purpose of this event is to extend a thank you to the volunteer fans and supporters in the form of a tailgate. Meanwhile, UT hopes to further expand its fan base and continue catering to its current fans. We show appreciation for the fans, for all that they mean to the game and the stuff they bring to the game. Scott says he looked forward to a good game and hopefully a victory for the Vols. Even though the Vols didn't pull off a victory this weekend, Vol Nation remains unmoved and continues to stand behind their team. For TVC News, I'm Max Davenport. So as you can see, myself and others have not yet lost hope as we expect to see more improvement coming from the Vols this season. Back to you. Thanks, Max. Another tailgate for the big game this past weekend brought soon-to-be and current alumni together for food, fun, and networking. The Honors Alumni Tailgate was hosted by the UT Honors and Scholars programs outside of the Howard Baker Center just before the Tide and the Vols kicked off. The event provided a way for senior honors students to network with honors alumni to get advice on job applications and openings, applying to graduate school, and more. Those who attended were also able to play cornhole, eat some buddies barbecue, and tour the new honors and scholars office suite. With October being Mental Health Awareness Month, the Student Government Association launched their initiative to support students fighting against the stigma of mental health problems. SGA members have been on Ped Walkway and other locations on campus handing out bracelets, snacks, and stress relief tools. The six different color bracelets represent an aspect of mental health. The goal of this project is for students to wear a bracelet that represents them or someone they know to help start the conversation and end the stigma around mental health awareness, especially on campus. SGA wants students to know that they are not alone, and you can stop by their table Thursday and Friday between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. on P Pedestrian Walkway to pick up a bracelet and learn more about the cause. The Center for Health Education and Wellness joined together with SGA this past Tuesday for National Substance Abuse Recovery Fair. Campus and community partners around Knoxville showcased their recovery and service centers in order to educate students, staff, and faculty. The Health Education and Wellness Center hopes that by educating students about recovery centers, students can help others that are struggling with substance abuse. Students were encouraged to participate by visiting five booths in exchange for free food and t-shirts. The National Substance Abuse Recovery Month has only one more event this month, so be sure to head to Hodges Library tomorrow for the Volunteer Speak Up Alcohol Edition. Students had the chance to show off their cooking skills at this week's World Showcase as well as learn about Chinese culture. Chinese culture was the topic of this week's World Showcase at the International House, and all students had hands-on experience by creating their own Chinese dumplings and watching a video about Chinese culture. Every semester, the International House showcases different cultures and events. The goal is to celebrate the cultures and people we have here at UT while learning and having fun. The last World Showcase is next week and we'll be celebrating Russian culture. Make sure you head to the iHouse for some great events. And for more information on those events, you can go to iHouse.utk.edu. And 2016 has brought about many unforeseen tragedies this past year. And with the year wrapping up, UT is taking the time to bring awareness and information to shed light on students. That's right, Jake. TVC reporter Ben Shabazz 
went out on campus this past week to take part in UT's Diversity Dialogues, an event centered around bringing attention to taking awareness to unexpected events happening around the world. In 2016, there have been 381 mass shootings in the United States. Because of this, the Diversity Dialogue series featured the topic and how students can be aware of the tragic events. In July of this year, nearly 50 people were shot and killed in the Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting, making it the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. Kathy DeVault was a witness to the horrific crimes, working as the Director of Strategic Partnerships in the city of Orlando. Although no community can prepare for a tragedy like we had in Orlando at the Pulse nightclub, it is important that every community, every city, every county, every university, every school campus have some kind of a plan in place for any type of a disaster, whether it be a mass casualty or any other disaster that could affect uh, the lives of many. She says people need to be more aware and educated on these events. Well, in speaking with some of your university leadership tonight, particularly your director of emergency management and having your corporal from the police department here, it seems as though there are a lot of training and a lot of programs that are offered to better prepare students for what to do should something happen here at the University of Tennessee. FBI agent Edward Reinhardt says in order to be more prepared, we need to have time to practice these traumatic situations and that techniques are advancing. And it all comes down to being prepared, right? So plan for it, practice practice for it. That's the only way you're going to be ready for it. We need to have drills. As, as uncomfortable as it makes people, if you're prepared for it, then you have a better chance of surviving it. He says dealing with the aftermath of the tragic event is one of the hardest parts of the entire ordeal. Therefore, making prevention key to avoiding these situations. Reporting for TVC News, this is Ben Shabazz. The panel discussed the importance of practicing fire and shooting drills seriously because you never know when the real thing will happen. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Bencha. And the next Diversity Dialogues Town Hall series will be held on Monday the 24th with a theme of freedom of expression and bias protocol. Coming up after the break, we'll have the presidents of the UT College Republicans and College Democrats in the studio for a debate. Yeah, what questions do you have about the political parties? Where do they stand on current events? And TVC's Savannah Jacoby talks to them about some important issues after the break. Stay tuned. The UT Student Health Center offers a variety of services for students, faculty, and staff of the university. Our full-service pharmacy is staffed with licensed pharmacists who are dedicated to the health and well-being of the UT community. Located on campus across from The Rock, the UT Student Health Center Pharmacy provides the same services offered at large retail chains at your convenience. We accept most insurance plans, so you will be able to purchase the medication you need for an affordable price. At the University of Tennessee, your health is essential. So come by our pharmacy and remember, a healthy ball is a happy ball. Well, the 2016 election is heating up as we inch closer and closer to November 8th. That's right, and to get to the perspective on the upcoming presidential election from student leaders, we have a special segment with TVC political reporter Savannah Jacoby. She is in the studio with the College Democrats and College Republicans presidents. Now, Savannah, what are the college students wanting to hear as they make their vote? Thanks, Jake. Well, college students are looking for a lot in this year's election. I'm here with Feroza Freeland, president of College Democrats, and Greg Butcher, president of College Republicans. Today, we have some questions prepared for the both of you. First, the first two questions, you will have a two minute limit to answer. So with that, let's begin. We will begin with you, Feroza. With this election having so much controversy, with a real, what is a realistic plan to see a balanced budget in our future and an actual reduction in the debt and deficit? Definitely. Um, well, first I'll say thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, I definitely think that that is an important issue to be thinking about, um, and I think I just want to remind everyone that the last time we did have a balanced budget, um, a Clinton was president. Um, so um, I think that for Democrats, uh, the way that we see to do that is to reform our tax system so that it's more fair and so that the wealthy are paying their fair share in taxes. Um, because right now what we see is that a lot of the you know top wealthiest people in this nation are paying lower tax rates than many, many middle class people. Um, and that's because of a lot of loopholes that we have in our tax system. And so I think that we're, we're very focused on making sure that the wealthy are paying their fair share in taxes um, and making sure that we are, are spending in a responsible way and spending on things that are you know, important to be spending on and prioritizing our spending. Thank you. And now what do you have to say, Greg? 
Sure. So I know that um, Feroza did point out the last time we had a, a budget surplus um, was, or not a budget deficit, at least was under President Clinton. And that is true. Um, what's missing from there is that it was a cooperative effort between the Republican Congress and President Clinton. That type of cooperation has been missing, unfortunately, for the past eight years. And so I think it's important as we move forward to understand that we do have to reform our tax code. The democratic solution would be to add to the current mess that is the IRS, um, taxes that take you, you know, pages or an H&R block, you know, counselor to, to, to do, um, as opposed to the Republican plan, which is taxes that you can do on your postcard. Three simple rates, um, three flat rates um, for the three tiers of Americans' uh, earnings in this country, which would greatly simplify the tax code, eliminate the loopholes, increase revenue. But what we have to tackle in this country, if we're going to be serious about the debt and deficit, is entitlements. Entitlements are no longer solvent the way they were before. You know, Social Security isn't even going to exist if we continue at this rate for me, you, um, and the rest of the people watching this. And so we have to understand that if we're going to reform spending, we have to reform the way we spend entitlement money. We have to preserve it for those who need it and protect it for everybody else. Okay, thank you, Greg. Now this question will also have a two-minute limit. Greg, what is your greatest fear or concern for our country that can be prevented in the next four years of action? I think my greatest fear for this country uh, over the next four years is the polarizing political climate. Um, as you guys probably saw over the past, you know, in the past week, we had a firebombing of a Republican office in North Carolina. We have um, violence at the rallies of the Republican nominee Donald Trump. Um, we have just a climate to where um, if you're a Republican in Congress, the Democrats don't want to work with you. And if you're a Democrat in Congress, the Republicans don't want to work with you. And so my greatest fear is that over the next four years, we'd have a president that could, a president that could potentially um, increase that divide. And so I think it's important for us to, over the next four years, look at the Congress, look at our leadership, not just in the presidency, um, and ask people to really return to civil discourse and cooperation in this country. Feroza, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, well, I actually definitely agree with Greg about the polarization issue. Um, and I think that I'll just point out that Secretary Clinton has a very strong track record of working across the aisle with both Democrats and Republicans um, to get really big things done for our country. Um, and she's made that a centerpiece of her campaign, uh, you know, the whole stronger together unity message um, and, and, and being a president really for everyone, um, even those who don't vote for her. Um, but to answer your question, I think that one of the greatest challenges that is facing our country right now is climate change and really the whole world. Um, and unlike the Republicans and Donald Trump who refuse to acknowledge that climate change is even real, um, Democrats understand that this is a very serious issue and we're already seeing a lot of repercussions um, from climate change, from you know the higher uh, global warming levels and higher levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. And so um, Secretary Clinton has a really bold plan to put us on a path to be um, completely reliant on renewable energy sources. Um, she wants us to be the clean energy superpower of the 21st century um, because we know that this is the direction that the world is going in. We're moving towards renewable energy sources and we need to focus on we need to focus on that. We need to focus on cutting our emissions um, and making sure that we can ensure a, a, a future for our planet and for our for our kids. And so I think that that's one of the biggest contrasts between the two tickets this year is um, that plan to address our environmental issues. Thank you, Feroza. Now you have 30 seconds to answer questions about current events. So Feroza, what more should be done to stop illegal immigration? Um, so I guess I'll start by saying um, building a wall is not a feasible solution. Uh, making Mexico pay for it, not a feasible solution. Um, deporting 11 million immigrants, not a feasible solution. So I think that what we need to do with immigration is um, make sure that we're working with these other countries to kind of stabilize the situation there. Um, and then making sure, you know, we can crack down on border security, um, but we can also give immigrants who are already here a pathway to citizenship. And Greg, your thoughts? Yeah, so unlike Feroza, the Republican Party does not believe in a pathway to citizenship where you allow people who have illegally come to this country to cut in line in terms of citizenship. Um, it's interesting, she says, we can't build a wall. I'm not sure we need a wall either, but President Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton both in the past have talked about the need for a border fence or a wall. So um, that, that still stands. I think it's important for us to enforce our border. I think it's important for us to look at a comprehensive solution for those that are here, if they've not been committing crimes, um, provide a pathway to legal status where they're paying taxes, where they are um, you know, contributing to society, but we cannot offer just a blanket pathway to citizenship that allows them to cut in front of lines of people who are coming here legally. All right, again, 30 seconds to answer. 
Greg, how should we prepare for the next global economic recession? I think it's important for the United States to have the strongest economy in the world, and we have seen the worst economic recovery in our nation's history under, the pre under President Obama. And we have labor force participation rate at any, a lower point than any time since 1972. And we have one in six people in poverty. We have you know, an ex a massive expansion of our national debt. And to prepare for our global recession, we have to make sure that we do not have $20 trillion uh, in debt. And so that's going to require a strong economy, reforming entitlements, lowering taxes, so that we can have um, the best possible, most competitive economy in the world. Thanks, Greg. Feroza, how do you feel about this topic? Uh, well, I would have to disagree with Greg on this. Um, let's remember that President Ob Obama has brought us back from the brink of the worst recession since the Great Depression. Um, actually, the debt has been reduced $1 trillion since he's been in office. Um, we have had over 14 million private sector jobs created, the longest streak of private sector job growth on record. The unemployment rate has been cut in half. And I, so I think that what we're seeing is that democratic economic policies work, and I think that uh, Secretary Clinton would work to make sure that we prevent another global recession. So I, I want to point out, no, the debt has not been cut $1 trillion since President Obama has been in office. I'd offer to show you a debt clock that shows us passing $21 trillion right now. Um, additionally, I, if you call democratic policies that have led to 90% of the wage growth, wealth growth in this country going to the top 1% a success, I think the American people would disagree with you. With all the is issues around the economy, leads me to my next question. Feroza, 30 seconds. What advice would you give to the average millennial who faces the uncertainty of graduating and not finding a job? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I definitely think that's a concern for most of us here. Um, and I think that I would just encourage you to look at the plans that both of these presidential candidates have put forth. Um, there's one presidential candidate who has comprehensive plans to address all of the issues that really matter to us, and one of those is student debt. I mean, we know that with so many of us graduating with really unbelievable and unmanageable levels of student debt, that that's gonna take a toll on our economy. And so Secretary Clinton has put forth a comprehensive plan um, not only to make sure that future students don't have to worry about the burden of student debt, but also to help students who currently have student debt refinance their loans and make it more manageable for them. Um, and so I would just say, look at the plans and look at what has been proposed and who you think will really be looking out for you um, in the future when we graduate. Greg, what are your thoughts on not being able to find a job after graduation? So my message to millennials is to look at the two different parties and compare. The, the millennial generation is the generation of Uber, it's the generation of Lyft, it's the generation of the most dynamic, diverse economy we've ever seen. The Democratic Party, um, their philosophy would be to, to stifle that, to regulate, uh, to regulate these out of, I mean, you have cities right now, Austin, Texas can't even use Uber because of their Democratic city councilman. Look at the difference in which party is going to allow this economy to flourish and transform in the 21st century and which one's going to hold it back. Thanks, Greg. With the many different options on health care for Rosa, is the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act good for America? Um, I would say yes. Uh, the Affordable Care Act is definitely a good thing for America. Um, we have seen over 20 million people gain health insurance under this law, um, and currently the uninsured rate is below 10%, which is the lowest it's ever been in our country's history. Um, and also for us as students, um, because of the law, we can now stay on our parents' health insurance um, until we're 26 years old. Um, with that, I will also say that we understand that the Affordable Care Act is not perfect, and we want to work to reform it and make it better, but we can't just repeal it and replace it with an unknown alternative. Thanks. Okay, and, our, um, and Greg. Yeah, so I'm going to give a quick few numbers to describe why the Affordable Care Act was the greatest lie ever put into existence. Number one, President Obama told you if you liked your plan, you could keep your plan. False. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. False. 55% of Americans are paying more for health insurance today than when Obamacare was passed after President Obama told us you would see an average of $2,500 reduction in your family premium. 35% increase for people in the employer-based market, 14% increase for those in the, in, or 41% in the individual market, increases in premiums discounting the extremely high deductibles, and it's not an unknown alternative. It's a well-reasoned alternative that's been put forth by the Republican Congress that has been denied um, by Democratic leadership. Okay, and our final question before rebuttal. Feroza, why should your party take the Oval Office as the president for the next four years? Um, so I think that Secretary Clinton has shown that, you know, she has the experience 
that we need for our country right now. Um, we're facing some really big challenges right now. I mentioned climate change, student debt, the economy, you know, all of these issues. Um, th it's going to take someone who has the experience and the knowledge to really get things done, to reach across the aisle and work with Republicans and break through the gridlock that has um, plagued Washington for so long. Um, and so I think that you know, in this election, there's really no contest. If you look at what the two parties are proposing, if you look at the rhetoric coming out of both campaigns, um, and if you look at the results that we've had for the past eight years under President Obama, um, I would say I think there's really no contest, especially for young people moving forward, who we want to see uh, leading our country and what kind of vision we want to have for our future. Okay, thank you for Rosa. And Greg, why would your party be the best fit? I think this is a really interesting election cycle um, with a, a lot of uh, unknowns for young people, and I think it's a hard decision for a lot of people to make. So first off, I would just say for the young conservatives out there who aren't supporting Donald Trump, you still have a place in our party, and if you're voting for him, that's fine as well. She talks about Secretary Clinton breaking the gridlock, calling you know half of Donald Trump supporters deplorables, saying in a Democratic uh, primary debate that her greatest, most proudest enemy she's made is Republicans, is not gonna cut the gridlock in D.C., and neither is being the most dishonest candidate to ever aspire to the presidency. That's not gonna break through the gridlock. And so I think it's important for people to really take a hard look, take a look at all the candidates, take a look at the two platforms of the parties um, that are aspiring to the presidency and make a wise decision. Okay, and, and with that, we are going to allow a 30-second rebuttal for any of the questions previously asked from each of you. So, Greg, we're going to start with you on this one. Yeah, I think it's important, again, to note on this, this issue of the economy. The Obama recovery, yes, we have recovered, but yes, it has been the slowest, most anemic recovery in the history of our nation. One in six people are living in poverty right now. One in six this is not America the way we want it. Like I said before, 90% of the wealth growth in this country has gone to the top 1%. And that wasn't a Republican president. That was, that was a Democratic president. And so we have to understand that if we are going to allow people to rise up and reach their God-given potential, it has to be in an open and flourishing economy, not one that is drowned in regulation um, from, from the Washington, D.C. Um, bureaucracy that's promoted by the Democratic Party. Thanks, Greg. And for you, Feroza. Okay, um, I'm going to try to get everything in. Um, so I will say... Um, that it may have been a Democratic president, but it was a Republican Congress. Um, and also, as far as, oh, in 2015, um, three point, the, the census report just came out the other day. 3.5 million people were lifted out of poverty, which is one of the largest um, reductions in the poverty level in one year that we've seen in our country's history. Um, so I would say that President Obama's policies are working. Also, about Hillary Clinton on the honesty issue, she was rated the most honest candidate in the race by independent fact-checking organization PolitiFact. So I think we need to separate conspiracy theory from truth and reality. Okay. And now I want to hear uh, a closing statement from both of you for why UT students should vote for your party. For Rosa, we're going to begin with you. Okay, um, and I'm glad that you said your party, because um, I do want to stress to everyone who's watching that uh, this isn't just a presidential election year. Um, we have Congress, we have Senate, we have the state legislature, which makes a lot of decisions that really affect us, especially here at UT. Um, and I would encourage everyone to vote blue all the way down the ballot. I think that Democrats are the party of inclusion. Um, we're the party of equal opportunity for all. We want to. We, we love this country. We think that America is already great. We think that our diversity is what makes us strong. Um, and we think that we can continue to improve um, America to make it more closely aligned with our highest ideals. And so we want to. We want. We envision a future where everyone has equal opportunities. Um, and where you know young people can can thrive and really do well. Um, so I would encourage everyone like go to HillaryClinton.com, check out her platform, check out her issues, um, and just get out and vote. Don't stay home this election; it's too important. Thank you, Feroza. Greg, what are your final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts: one, but let me get this out of the way really quick. I think anybody watching at home who thinks that Hillary Clinton is the most honest candidate ever is laughing as well as I am. Um, PolitiFact is owned by the Tampa Bay Times, which endorsed Hillary Clinton, so it's no shock that they've given her a nice review. Uh, the FBI didn't give her such a nice review. Um, secondly, here's the deal, folks. This is a crazy election, and I'm not going to say I like Donald Trump. I'm not going to pretend I like anything that's coming out of his mouth, because I really don't. Um, but I think there's a serious division in the Republican Party. I think there's a serious division in our country. I aspire from the Republican Party of Senator Tim Scott and Paul Ryan and Jeb Bush, which is a hopeful, optimistic message that if you remove the obstacles facing people put in by our government, if you allow people um, to 
pursue whatever their version of the American dream is, not whatever version um, is told to you by the bureaucracy of our, of our overwhelming uh, inefficient government, then yes, everybody can reach their God-given potential, and that's what I believe in. And so I encourage you, take a look at all the Republican candidates up and down the ballot and make the best decision because the candidates that the Democrats have put forth, it's an agenda of uh, backtreading and, and not an agenda of progress at all. Can I say one thing really fast? Really fast. I will just say that every single major newspaper in this country has endorsed Hillary Clinton. Ask Gary Johnson. All right. I just want to thank you both for Rosa and Greg for being here today and for giving UT students an insight into both what all of your parties are involved in. Well, UT, I hope you have a better insight on who you are voting for this election, just in time for early voting, which opens today and lasts through November 3rd. If you are interested in hearing more from Greg and Sarah, the, Has the Haslam Business Building will be hosting a debate with re representatives from both College Democrats and College Republicans Thursday night at 7 p.m. in room 203. They will be discussing issues, including all the hot topics going on in the election season, and if that isn't enough for to bring you out, there will also be pizza. That's all from me. I'm Savannah Jacoby. Ansley and Jake, back to you. Coming up after the break, well, one minute the temperatures are cold and the next they are hot. When will the roller coaster end and how can you prepare for the upcoming cold blast this weekend with TVC's Kayla Grainer? And that loss against Alabama devastated fans all over. We have the play-by-play -play on what happened and how the Vols are preparing to make a comeback after their bye week. You're watching TVC News. Stay tuned. The UT Student Health Center offers a variety of services for students, faculty, and staff of the university. Our full-service pharmacy is staffed with licensed pharmacists who are dedicated to the health and well-being of the UT community. Located on campus across from The Rock, the UT Student Health Center Pharmacy provides the same services offered at large retail chains at your convenience. We accept most insurance plans so you'll be able to purchase the medication you need for an affordable price. At the University of Tennessee, your health is essential. So come by our pharmacy and remember, a healthy ball is a happy ball. Welcome back. Another 80 degree week has passed us, making it feel more and more like a summer day rather than fall. Yeah, I think we're all beginning to wonder when will fall finally make its mark. Well, TVC's Kayla Grainer is in the studio with your weather report. And Kayla, I hear we have some cooler air moving into the forecast. Thanks, guys. You are correct, Jake. Fall temperatures are making a return this weekend and seem to be staying for a while here in East Tennessee. Plan to take a jacket and an umbrella a few days this upcoming week. Tomorrow we can expect mostly cloudy skies with a high of 85 degrees and a low of 58 degrees. Friday starts out with morning showers with a high of 64 degrees and a low of 46 degrees. The weekend and beginning of the work week will be quite opposite with sunny skies and perfect fall temperatures. This Saturday you can expect a high of 67 degrees and a low of 46 degrees. The high Sunday will be 70 degrees with a low of 45 degrees. Temperatures warm back up slightly Monday and Tuesday with highs in the mid-70s and lows in the mid-40s. Clouds come back in next Wednesday and Thursday while the high remains in the 70s. Showers roll in again next Friday and the clouds will linger into next Saturday and Sunday. So to be sure to take advantage of the fantastic weather this weekend with all of the outdoor activities on and around campus, especially since the Vols have a bye week. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Kayla. And another loss for the Vols has come and gone this weekend. The game has some pretty rough patches along the way. Well, TVC Sports Director Elena Emery is in the studio to walk us through the Vols' second loss of the season. Elena. Thanks, Jake and Ansley. It's a sad week on Rocky Top after a tough loss against Alabama on Saturday. Alabama took the lead early, scoring 14 points in the first quarter and adding seven more before halftime. Tennessee's only touchdown came in the second quarter from running back Alvin Kamara, and in the third quarter, kicker Aaron Medley hit a 37-yard field goal to make the score 28-10. to That was Tennessee's last scoring play because in the fourth quarter, Alabama kicked it into gear and scored 14 more unanswered points. The final score was 49 Alabama, 10 Tennessee. Tennessee dropped eight spots in the recent AP poll to number 18. This week, the Vols have a much-needed bye week. Hopefully, they'll refuel and regroup and be ready for an away game against South Carolina. In his press conference, Coach Butch Jones said, quote, I think the bye week is coming at an appropriate time. We have a lot of goals to get better as a football team. In other UT sports news, it's finally time to talk about basketball. In a recent SEC preseason poll, the Tennessee Lady Vols are projected to be ranked third behind defending champs South Carolina and Mississippi State. 
A few returning starters include redshirt junior guard Diamond Shields, redshirt junior center Mercedes Russell, junior guard Jamie Nard, and senior point guard Jordan Reynolds. The Lady Vols will play an exhibition game on November 7th at Carson Newman. That's it for sports this week. Back to you all at the desk. Thanks, Elena. Well, local residents were able to come together on Friday to show their love for the city of Knoxville. The first annual local Knox Fest brought out the best of Knoxville to the Bearden area this weekend. The event brought together the best of local business in Knoxville to showcase the diverse culture we have in the area. Among the events included exclusive craft beer tasting, local art showcases, and even local farm animals. The festival was sponsored by Freedom Chiropractic and I Love Local, an organization that focuses on empowering and supporting Knoxville small businesses. While many thought they were getting good deals on football tickets from scalpers, it ended up turning into a long walk back to the car. This football season, scalpers have been targeting football goers with fake tickets, and UTPD says there are ways you can protect yourself from scammers if you decide to take the risk. They say take a picture with the scalper. If they refuse, it's probably a fake. And UTPD also says that have the seller walk you to the gate and not to buy it if they don't do it. As for testing the physical ticket, flip it over on the back. If the power tee scratches off with a coin, the ticket is legitimate. But UTPD still warns not to buy from scalpers, and if you don't have a ticket by the night before the game, it's safe to bet you will not have a real one on Saturday night. Tom Cruise brought the glamour of Hollywood to East Tennessee on Monday night for the premiere of his movie, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. The Regal Cinemas in Turkey Creek was packed with Tom Cruise fans as he walked the red carpet. Cruz's charity movie screening benefited Variety, an organization helping children with special needs in East Tennessee. He took time to talk to fans and take pictures with them before he addressed the crowd inside the theater. Cruz said that the fans are the driving factor behind the making of his movies. I make my movies for them. I'm, I'm an entertainer. And it's, I've always wanted to make movies, and I'm, I'm a theater lover first and foremost, and it's a real privilege to be able to do what I do. And, and I think about audiences every day when I'm, when I'm developing films and when I'm making them, and, and it's a real joy to be able to finally, you know, give it to them. Well, don't miss out on the opportunity to learn more about your fellow students by taking the pedestrian walkway for the Arab Fest. The event will be taking place from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Friday and 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday. Traditional food, music, and dancing will be offered at the event to showcase, showcase Arab culture. Admission to the event is free and open to everyone. Well, it is getting to that time of year again where the witches, wizards, clowns, and other creatures escape into the night to enjoy the annual Halloween Vol Night Long. Their annual Halloween Town event will take place this Friday from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. at the Hyper Building, Vol Wall. There will be many fun things to do, such as go through a haunted house, watch the screening of Halloween Town, carve pumpkins, play games, and much more. Free t-shirts and candy will be given out. Make sure to dress up as your favorite character because there will be a costume contest as well. And join the Knoxville community in the 20th annual Susan G. Komen Knoxville Race for the Cure this Saturday in World Tour Park. The race helps fund breast cancer screenings and patient assistance initiatives throughout the area. The goal this year is to raise $200,000 and they have already raised over $80,000 so far. For more information on how to sponsor or participate, please visit www.komenknoxville.org. Well, thank you, Savannah, for that great debate. I think we got some really great perspectives. Um, College students are a big demographic in the upcoming election, so. Yeah, I'm really excited for the debate tomorrow night at Haslam as well, just to continue it on. Definitely, we'll see what the two candidates have yeah. to say and where it goes from there. Yes, well that's gonna do it for today's show. I'm Ansley Daniel. And I'm Jake Albright. Have a great week, UT.